Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing, and mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, kindness of a Savior. Tell 
Sing a 
Good morning online congregation this morning. Um, just to let y'all know real quick, uh, Pastor Allen has uh, decided to take a well-deserved break this week. He will be back this coming week. Uh, so if you need him, you can call on him then. Uh, in his absence, Cynthia Corley, who has been with us, we talked about earlier, 10 years since she retired, is going mm -hmm. to give us our message today. Thank you, Cynthia. <laughs> Thank you. Um, without further ado, I'll hand it over to you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Tim, I remember when your kids were in my confirmation. Did he really? Awesome. Um. Tim mentioned that uh, your pastor is off for a little while, and he called me up, and he said, would you like to come treat at Trinity? And I said, sure. He did not tell me that he was going to be gone, but I thought that was interesting. <laughs> but all pa as be being a pastor for 30 years, I, everybody needs time off. And so I thought that was really nice. Um, it has been a while since I've been in this building, but it looks a lot the same. And I'm really impressed because several of the cobwebs that were here for the nine years that I was here are gone. <laughs> I won't tell you if there are any hang you know, leftovers, but I know that most of the ones that I remember because they were so prominent are gone. So uh, it's, it's a joy for me to be here with you today, and I um, look forward to seeing folks that I know and getting to know folks that I don't. The um, 
The gospel lesson is from John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 25. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. May the Lord bless to us this reading from his holy word. Unite in prayer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Now you all probably remember last Sunday was Easter. Now we are Easter people. We are Christmas people too, but because Christmas would mean nothing without Easter, we are Easter people. We celebrate the Lord's resurrection every Sunday, of course, but on Easter we have the greatest celebration because Easter is our high holy day. It's the day when we rejoice in Jesus' resurrection, his triumph over sin and death, and his securing of the way for us to everlasting life. And the Easter season is important because it lasts 50 days. So we celebrate never forgetting the cost of our freedom, our freedom from the curse of sin, never forgetting the price paid, the persecution and the pain and death. We remember the story. On a certain Friday, a group of people saw their leader to whom they had committed their lives crucified on a cross. Bewildered and heartbroken, they watched him die, then saw his body placed in a tomb, and when that heavy stone thudded across the door of the tomb and was secured by the seal of the Roman Empire, it crashed through their minds, demolishing all their hopes and their dreams. In black despair, confusion, and disillusionment, they scattered across the area trying to pick up the pieces of the lives they left three years before. But within a few days, all of that was changed. The scattered followers of Jesus were together again, filled with confidence, joy, and purpose. In the very city where Jesus had been publicly executed, they launched the most powerful and dynamic crusade in history. Obviously, something had happened. The cross of defeat suddenly became the symbol of victory. The message became not what Jesus of Nazareth taught, but the person of Jesus himself. What had happened? Easter Day had happened. The followers and friends of Jesus believed without question that he had died on Friday afternoon, and now he was alive. So how did they know? It certainly wasn't because any of them had seen Jesus burst through the stone door in a blaze of glory. It wasn't because the body disappeared. It wasn't simply because the tomb was empty. They knew Jesus was alive because they saw him and talked with him. For almost six weeks, Jesus appeared to a person here, two disciples there, a group here, a crowd. He was seen in several different locations in a room out in the open along a country road by the Sea of Galilee. In every encounter, he radiated a tremendous self-authenticating power. Now as then, the miracle of Easter is discovered through personal encounters with the living Christ. And this is what makes the difference. This is what makes 
Easter people. It's all built on a simple testimony of John 25. We have seen the Lord. It was from those early encounters with the risen Christ that new belief emerged, a faith which soon became known as Christianity, and the foundation of that faith is God raised Jesus from the dead. The miracle of Easter is God's miracle. God raised Jesus from the dead. Christians believe that God, by raising Jesus from the dead, accepted, endorsed, and verified everything he was and did. God, by his mighty act, showed where he stood. He was on the side of his son, declaring that his truth was right while the attitudes and actions of his enemies were wrong. Because of Easter, we are sure Jesus was God's revealer. The words of Jesus are the words of God. The acts of Jesus are the acts of God. The suffering of Jesus reflects the suffering of God. And the victory of Jesus became the victory of God. Slowly over the years, the Christian interpretation of the universe, of life, and of history was formed. Led by that giant of Christianity, Paul, Christian doctrine emerged. Logically, powerfully, it became the most comprehensive and satisfying interpretation of life. And it continues to be. Still, all is built on one mighty act of God. God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, and that conviction rested on the claim of the early disciples. We have seen the Lord. Out of an encounter with the risen Christ came a new community, the church. With amazing speed, this new community, with its own belief, own lifestyle, own fellowship, own purpose, emerged. Jesus didn't just leave a book, or a creed, or a system of thought, or a rule of life. He left a visible community. He left the Easter people, the church. And what a community they proved to be. For 300 years, they existed, existed without owning any property. And that's kind of hard for us to imagine. He, he had a group that had no visible presence except in the lives of these Christians, and yet they spread like a forest fire around the world. Since early times, this community has survived vast social and historic changes. It has outlived empires and has persisted through major upheavals like the Renaissance and the Industrial Revolution and World Wars. Today, this community called the church is a global reality. It has become the only universal faith of history. We find it everywhere, and it is still growing. Today, the church is growing at an unprecedented speed in Asia, Latin America, the Pacific, and Africa. Take Africa, for example. In 1875, there were 500,000 Christians. By 1925, they had grown to 5 million. By 1975, there were 100 million Christians in Africa, and now there are more Christians there than in any other continent on earth. How can the miracle of this magnitude be explained? Only by seeing the risen Christ. Only by realizing that the power of the resurrection is real. It continues to throb through the church. The risen Christ created this new community, the Easter people. And our task is not yet finished. Jesus said, go make disciples. With the population explosion we have in the world today, there are still more people who know little or nothing about Jesus Christ. And this is not just in foreign countries. I met a college senior some years ago who did not know either the meaning or the story of Christmas. He thought it was just a nice secular holiday. He knew nothing of Jesus. No, Easter people still need to go forth with the message of Easter. 
and out of the experience of the risen Christ, a new future. Those happenings on the first Good Friday, the crucifixion of Jesus, made it look like the early disciples had no future. It seemed that Jesus' end story and theirs was over. But suddenly, with the resurrection of Jesus, there was a future. Hope was born anew, and that future begun then has never ended. We're still on the receiving end of new revelations, new directions, new power from the risen Christ to handle the complex life of these fast-moving years of the 21st century. Today, his living mind and heart and Holy Spirit direct the life of the church, and we can commune with Jesus as friend with friend. The only difference is we cannot see him with our physical eyes. And the risen Christ gives us a future not only when we are doing well, but also when we are battered by sin and despair and feelings of alienation. John Wesley said once, it takes as great a miracle to bring a man or a woman from the sepulcher of sin as it did to bring Christ's body from the tomb. By the ever-present grace of God, that miracle occurs day after day in the lives of people as they, discover, as they discover new meaning and wholeness in the good news through commitment to Jesus Christ as Lord. In his words which call us, call us from sin to holiness, making us realize who we are and whose we are. We strut and preen, we are proud and vain, and he says, blessed are the poor in spirit. We apply cosmetics and say, doesn't he look natural? And we purchase big funerals and try to lessen the reality of death. And he says, blessed are they that mourn. We boast and brag, we gloat over the substance and nature of our conquests, and he says, blessed are the meek. We know the meaning of self selfishness, corruption, and immorality of undisciplined habits and relationships in our daily lives. And he says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. We are jealous, bitter, vengeful, unforgiving. And he says, blessed are the merciful. We misuse and exploit persons we say we love are often driven by senses gone wild, and he says, blessed are the pure in heart. We threaten and injure each other, and he says, blessed are the peacemakers. We play it safe, we refuse to run risks or stand up for those ideals we somehow know are valid and true, and he says, blessed are you when you are reviled and persecuted for my sake. We are not perfect people, but we are Easter people. If we had been perfect, there would have been no need for him to die on the cross. If we could buy or earn or do enough good to cover our sin, there would have been no need for his death. But we look to him for help, for guidance, for strength, that we may be better may come closer in our commitment to him, because after all, we have met him too. Worship this risen Lord. That cross is empty. It's a symbol of his suffering and death, yes, but also a symbol that death for all was conquered. He is risen. No thorns now, only glorious life, and it is up to us to tell people about it. At the heart of the Easter message is the encounter with the living Christ. At the heart of Easter people is the encounter with the living Christ. And this encounter continues throughout your life. Daily, as our lives are open to him, we receive bright, vibrant new faith, the richness of new relationship, the excitement of new cause, and fulfillment of a new future. We experience resurrections from the tombs in our own lives. After all, we are Easter people. You and I, we have seen the Lord. May we pray. Gracious God, we happily praise you again for yet another Easter season. 
we experience the joy, the wonder, the awe all over again of Jesus' resurrection. For all Jesus has done, for all you have done, we gratefully thank you. In his holy name we pray. Amen. And now I believe we're supposed to do the Apostles' Creed. So I'd like for you to stand as we affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's sing a song. Thank you. 